In today's topic of discussion is Pateau syndrome. Pateau syndrome is a genetic disorder which is also commonly known as trisomy 13. The next behind what causes this disorder is quite apparent through the name trisomy 13. Trisomy meaning a third or an additional copy of a gene and 13 in relation to chromosome 13 that is impacted with this specific disorder. Most cases of the syndrome are not inherited and in fact occur as a result of a random mutation. Trisomy occurs when non-disjunction takes place during meiosis and the result is 1 to 2 cells with an N plus 1 chromosomes. The zygote form with a sex cell will result in a baby with an additional or 47 chromosomes impacting chromosome 13. There are a few different types of trisomy 13, all related to some sort of an extra copy of the 13th chromosome. The first type is full trisomy 13, and this is when there is a full third copy of chromosome 13 in all of the cells, and this is in about 95% of the cases. This type results in worsened symptoms and a decreased survival rate. The second type is mosaic trisomy 13, and this is when there is a third copy of chromosome 13 in some but not all of the cells. This impacts about 5% of the cases and results in milder symptoms and an increased survival rate in comparison to full trisomy 13. The next type is partial trisomy 13, and this is when there is an extra part of a third copy of chromosome 13 in the cells, and this occurs in less than 1% of the cases of trisomy 13 and generally has fewer symptoms. Finally, a less common type is translocation trisomy 13, which is the only one that can be inherited from healthy parents. It occurs when part of chromosome 13 is translocated to another chromosome. A person with this condition will have two full copies of chromosome 13 plus extra genetic material from chromosome 13 attached to another chromosome, which is a total of three copies of chromosome 13. The doctor may be able to spot physical signs of trisomy 13 during the normal first trimester ultrasounds, or you can show up in tests like the NIPT, which is a specialized blood test. However, these are all screening tests, which means they only raise concern for your doctor, as may be a sign that your baby has trisomy 13, um, and that more tests like the CVS or the amniocentesis needs to be done for an exact diagnosis. Both of these diagnostic tests require chromosome testing, and for this, a karyotype is to be done, and this is what it may look like. Notice how there is a third chromosome 13, that is how doctors know for sure that the baby has trisomy 13. Babies with trisomy 13 grow slowly in the womb and have a low birth weight as the development along the central portion of the embryo is often weakened. Both this and holoprosencephaly are responsible for several of the malformities. Holoprosencephaly is a condition where the two hemispheres of the brain fail to completely separate and this is found in 60-70% to 70 of trisomy 13 patients. With this come several developmental and intellectual disabilities as well as facial malformities. Some of the facial malformations associated with this disease um, include cleft palate or cleft lip, which is found in 70-80% to 80 of the cases. Eye defects are also very common, they occur in 60-70% to 70 of the cases. These defects include cyclopia, which is the presence of only one eye, microphthalmia, which is the presence of small eyes, or anophthalmia, which is no eyes. Another really common one that occurs in 60-70% to 70 of the cases is polydactyly, which is extra fingers or toes. Leading complications of trisomy 13 include sleep apnea, which is pauses of breathing. Another one is respiratory problems, so many can only breathe with the help of a ventilator. And as a result of the breathing complications, infections like pneumonia are very common. Another reoccurring complication is cyanosis, which is discoloration of the skin as a result of low levels of oxygen. Heart problems are a major implication as cardiac arrest and heart disease are connected to 69% of cases and result in 13% of patient deaths. Trisomy 13 occurs in every one of 10,000 to 16,000 live births. However, the frequency of trisomy 13 is a lot higher during pregnancy, but many babies with this condition often miscarry prior to birth, therefore aren't considered under the birth statistic. In addition, the incidence increases with increased maternal age. The average maternal age of mothers who have given birth to babies with Pateau syndrome is 31. As with other trisomies, when non-disjunction occurs in meiosis, conditions like Pateau syndrome are caused, and the likelihood of these mistakes increases with maternal age. The risk of reoccurrence in pregnancies in the future is 1%, and there are no known groups of people who are more likely to have this condition. There is no specific or generalized treatment for Pateau syndrome. Treatment varies from child to child and depends on their specific symptoms. And as a result of severe health problems a newborn baby with the syndrome will have, doctors usually focus on minimizing discomfort and making sure they're able to feed. And due to the presence of several life-threatening medical problems, many infants with the syndrome die within the first few days or weeks of life. More than 90% die within the first year. Only 5-10% to of babies with less severe forms will usually make it past one year. And because the goal is prolonged survival and the statistics are not in favor of longevity, surgeries are often delayed for the first few months of life, so there's no risk of not recovering from a major surgery. Although there aren't any treatments, the most effective and common coping mechanism for the parents and the child is therapy.
That'll be all for me today. Thanks for listening. Hopefully you learned something about Pateau Syndrome.